I would like to welcome you once again to the session today. It's going to be anchored by Dr. Said. I want to check through if he's online. Is Dr. Said? Yes, I can see he's online. Hello, Doc. Yeah, hello. Hi, hello, everyone. Yeah. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. So I am Dr. Said Kori. Uh, I will be taking you the session today on the BIM Africa uh, Student Advocacy Program uh, 2019 on the topic BIM Evolution Acronyms and the Definitions. First of all, it's just good to know about myself. I mean, about myself to let you know. I have my master's in digital architectural design in Manchester and a professional certificate in BIM and digital design. I've coordinated so many conferences and international events on the BIM. I have my PhD also in digital architecture, quite with concentration on building information modeling at the University of Liverpool, where I have been teaching for over four years uh, on uh, MSc BIM, uh, building information modeling students. So about myself, uh, on the BIM-related membership, uh, I'm currently the chairman, board of directors for the BIM Africa Initiative. Lining the job tax uh, on issue of BIM job tax in USA in 2015. Uh, and also, some of our pictured work is that I have led the project management team in the first publicly funded BIM based project in Nigerian Army University in Nigeria. I led the team of consultants in developing what sort of a kind of a, something like a BIM, but is asset information modeling, which is just like the bottom top approach of BIM from the asset management point of view. It's a bit different from the building information modeling and it's under the Ministry of Finance. It's the model is being used now to coordinate all the asset, uh, fixed assets of uh, Nigerian uh, government assets um, under a particular platform. The same concept of BIM, but in another way. And I have led the team of professionals in developing the Nigerian construction strategy document in uh, document vision 2025 which we are working on it already now. So going quickly onto uh, the uh, presentation, the content of the presentation, I will be covering the current project design management, what's the state of the situation right now in Africa, and then the story evolution on how the kind of uh, evolution start from the CAD, coming to 3D, you know, all this nomenclature issue, and how it becomes today, and we are talking about BIM, and what next? On the future trend and what does BIM mean we covered also on BIM for what BIM or the 3D model was the issue there and again to understand the concept of BIM as a process then coming down to the level of BIMs and lastly I will introduce the issue of closed BIM and open BIM aspect which is quite a kind of a consequence uh, on the consequence of the situation of, uh, uh, of uh, this uh, different definition of beams that brought about the concept of, okay, let's go close beam and open beam. We'll get to know more about that one later. Getting back to the current project management and what are the consequences? You know, the current project management is, of course, as usual, you know, the construction industry where the architect make the first designs, get, uh, give it uh, to the engineer, the engineer gives it to that country surveyor, you know, when there is any need for information, you always see them, uh, Going traditionally, the architect need to talk to the contractor or the finance engineer, facility managers. They all want to talk to each other. Okay. Yeah, can everyone now see? Yes, we can. Okay. So I will just, uh, I don't need to go back again. Uh, 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 on the topic, yeah, that's the topic, and that's as I said earlier, this about myself, and it's just kind of uh, you need to, uh, you can go through it later on the materials, and the presentation content as I just covered it as well, and I will just proceed directly on the current project management, what's the consequences, and talking about the typical construction management uh, situation. Uh, that we are on now. You see, there is, uh, the currently there is that need always that the architects need to talk to the owner, contractor, facility managers, engineers, you know, they always need to share the information. But you could see here that uh, 
on doing that one, on the common pre-beam processes, there is always that issue of data re-entering the data. As a consequence, you see errors, you see data, some data loss, and other things. So what we are coming with is, and beam is, is very important for us to reflect on what is on the right side now, which is challenge and change management, which is quite particularly, I mean, uh, relevant to the situation of within information modeling. You could see now, uh, the issue is, as a BIM manager, you should always be mindful that you are not really coming to question any professionalism. One is first an architect before becoming BIM manager. One is first an engineer before becoming BIM manager. Or whatever you come with BIM is just like, okay, on the right side, you could see that, okay, the two guys are busy with their barrels and having some problems. And then the BIM manager here just lending them just the kind of will. And they were saying, no, thanks, we are too busy, you know. So the situation here is that the beam manager here is neither changing any content of that barrel, is neither changing that, uh, those people, and they are also not changing anything there. They are just kind of facilitating, helping them to do something better. You get it? So that's the uh, idea of the BIM. BIM is not here to question any. So it's always wrong to think that, okay, with BIM manager is a, a certain, it's a particular profession that is also being created in the, in the construction industry. Yes, of course. For the time being, you will see that one happening, but not anymore. I mean, not at the long run. Let's go to the next one. Of course, the typical situation, that kind of pictures that they always share on the issue of BIM. Of course, not that BIM is always the solution to all this problem, especially when you take it from the technology point of view, but BIM could be able to minimize the situation that could lead to those kind of design problems. So the story, let's talk about the evolution of the CAT. CAT, of course, is started from the 2D solution. I will make it clear how the 2D solution, 3D solution, and BIM solution, and the construction coordination issue of 5D, 6D, and ND situation. 2D solution, let's talk about it. On the 2D solution, the working concept always is okay. Drop everything in 2D. You see no 3D model is created there. That's the typical AutoCAD. You see where you just have a kind of a 2D uh, platform where you can just do design changes, maintain manually, and you see typically each drain is saved in its own pile. Where you see this one is uh, the flow plan, whatever. So what is the benefit of that? It's just compared to hand drawing because the major issue here, okay, compared to hand drawing, you have pasta modification because of course you are using the computer to do that. On the issue of that, you also have more accuracy rather than that of the paper. You have the kind of, uh, but when you compare it to other CAT methods like the 3D, you always see that it's also easier to understand concept because it's just an electronic drafting. But what are the drawbacks in the 2D CAT that makes us to obviously have to move for 3D? Our changes on one drawing don't influence. That is, the drawings are not parametric. They don't really change with others. No more content compared with hand drawing. Calculation and other design problems are also difficult to identify. So let's go to the next one, which is working concept of 3D CAT. Those are the kind of story that led to the emergence of BIM. Usually the 3D CAD, which is the same AutoCAD and other uh, CAD softwares, they did it, they improved themselves into the 3D, which is just three dimension, but computer aided design. So, which is more of the application has both the 2D and 3D capabilities, building can be modeled in 3D if necessary. But however, the problem with that is there is always, that concept doesn't follow the architectural design processes because it's purely onto that of drafting. Documentation is not only automatic, like that of uh, the case of the 2D, it's just that there is more dimension on that of 2D. But when you compare it to BIM, user may work purely in 2D if they wish, smaller files, because the, that allows them to do that traditional method instead of the, uh, of the BIM approach. So now let's come on to the BIM concept, introducing the BIM concept, building information model, also known as the virtual modeling, building simulation, uh, smart construction, all those things are names that are given to building information model. Drawing, building views, use within visualization, calculation, and quantity text of are automatically derived from the 3D model. Where within that model, the model here, meaning I will come to explain about what is model modeling and management and other things about the acronym of it. 
the BIM. So going back to the evolution of that, compared to 3D, you see the elements have architectural meaning. Changes on one brain is quite parametric. Automatic quantity take up, connections to structural. What, what are the drawbacks of BIM, which usually is very known to our local context, are uh, higher training requirements. It's required more into cultural issues than the technical, because it's not only about the software, but it's also about the, uh, it's also about the, the process as well. So BIM is a process now. First, BIM is a process, it's not only a product. Generic term used to describe advanced 3D CAD technology for modeling and managing buildings and information related to them. The AIA defines BIM as a model based technology linked with a database of project information. It covers geometric, spatial relation, quantities, and property of building components. So now, Working concept of BIM is a single pile concept. Although this single pile concept is something that is, uh, has been, uh, here file does not mean really just a single pile, but a platform issue. Automatic generation and updating of documentation. We'll come to understand that. As a result now, can I say that we can understand that BIM is not a CAD, it's not a computer aided design. CAD helps people to draw, BIM helps people to construct. Because what the all about the 2D, 3D CAD softwares that we have been using before, or if you understand BIM as a CAD, then you are only using BIM for to draw, and which is not BIM. BIM helps people to construct, because BIM is a process. BIM is not a CAD. BIM was never meant to be CAD at the first place. CAD is a replacement for pen and paper, a documentation tool. By comparison, BIM programs are design applications in which the documentation pro, uh, flows from an derivative of process, from the schematic design to construction to facility management. So CAD deals with automating the process of construction, while CAD helps people to draw. It only helps you to automate the drafting aspect. With that, we can say the BIM is quite more complex than that of CAD. So what does BIM mean? BIM stands for three words. The building and the information are not ambiguous. The M of the acronym may mean as the case may be, like modern modeling management. The ambiguity here is not really an issue because all the uh, modeling, model, and management is what that M in BIM stands for. So they are all, it's all encompassing. So the acronym now, Building information modeling, all about the modeling, model, model, model management. They are all the BIM protocols. The output is what you deal with as building information model. Let's see the difference. What's the difference? If you say building information modeling here, it means it's a business process. When you say business in a building information model, is the output of the business process. So it's with the output now. When you say building information management, is the organization and control of that business process. And when you say BIM as a whole, you talk about the business process, which is on the whole, like the modeling now as a concept, modeling organization. Is building information modeling is the business process for generating and replacing building data, which is the model, to design, construct, and operate the building during its life cycle. Not just the building, it could be asset. It could be anything, just as I earlier uh, introduced. Let's going back to the uh, advantage. Okay, let's get down here. Modeling organization. You have the sequential design, concurrent engineering, centralized design, all those type of design. Sequential, which deals more with the kind of a different function, iteration, wire function. Uh, Mr. A, uh, professional A gives his outcome to professional, uh, professionals B is something that is the BIM supports as well, whether it is concurrent engineering or whether it's centralized design, whichever. So now, management process. Man BIM information, when you use the word management, is the organization and control of the business process using the digital prototype to effect the sharing of, of information over the entire life cycle of an asset, whole life approach. So, uh, uh, why using the BIM? Why the need for BIM? 
Only the, facility, uh, the B model is achieved as a resource. From here, the performance of the complete structure can be tested. You could see here uh, on the right side is the vision that uh, the UK want to achieve in uh, 2016, is to lower the cost of their building with 33%, faster delivery with 50 and other things. Part of the main strategy they wanted to achieve this thing is through the smart construction, where BIM is central to achieving all this goal. So those are the clear reasons why BIM is very important uh, because those are places where they have tested it and they were able to even achieve those kind of visions. Project life cycle is also one of the uh, project management, one of the reason why a beam is necessary because it coordinates and it automates the project management. As I said, we have a project already uh, here in Nigerian Army University Niger uh, BIM in Nigeria. It's the first publicly funded project. Let me just give a very quick uh, uh, case study about that, uh, story about it. Uh, what we came is, uh, we were we first made a presentation about BIM, uh, BIM building information model. They were Army generals that are quite you know, usually army are always well educated. You see them well vast in what they were doing. So we just get the team of some uh, some generals and we introduce the concept of BIM for them under a company, Think Lab. So when we introduced that one, it was okay. We had to drag through. They were they are happy with that one, but their problem is that where on the legislation are we coming from? Because the legislation in Nigeria is only identifying the engineers, architects, uh, continuous surveyors. So there is no big manager. So as a result, we had to go through back and study well and see how we can fit in into the system. We came down, right now we are being employed as being based project management consultant. Because we are first project management, we have to find ourselves. And this is quite applicable because Often we used to think that, okay, as a BIM manager, you are creating a new profession. You are wrong. If you do that one, you are always wrong. You should understand that BIM is just a kind of a tool, I mean, uh, a process that should facilitate the other mainstream established process. BIM cannot replace an architect. BIM is wrong to think BIM can reflect quantities of bill. Some people just using the quantity talk of, of rabbit and thinking that, okay, QS are soon going to go out of the system. No, no, you are not. Architect still means architect, engineers, they are more, these are established professions. Architects are, I mean, BIM managers are only facilitating those ones. So anyway, we got down as BIM project management consultant, and then we are able to coordinate, bring about the BIM execution plan. Today we brought about the construction execution plan on that BIM, BIM construction execution planning. We brought about documents, and then we have been following the BIM protocols there. So BIM process, consequence, uh, process, consequence analysis on project cost. Those are also important, clear, uh, reasons why BIM were being adopted in many countries. You could see that's the evolution of new design process where ability to impact costs, you could see it in blue, where from the pre-design stage is where the cost rise and then it can reduce it as the, as the uh, you could see once BIM is used in the terms of cost, you will spend more in the pre-design and you will be spending more on the design stage, but you will be saving costs when you are doing the operation and the construction. Cost of design changes as well. In the two, you could see the cost of design changes. It is going to be reducing here. The, the, the changes is going to be higher at the beginning, uh, but it will be less at the end. So key stakeholders, more understanding with BIM. Now, with that, we can make a little conclusion to say BIM is not new. Because now, if you say BIM is new, you are just like saying uh, the, the effort of uh, helping construction stakeholders to do more with their, with their profession is not new, and BIM is just one of them. BIM is just, it's not just an IT information technology issue or just a software. It's not a 3D alone. It's not only a something designers do just about project delivery or short life, but it's something a prof uh, it, it's a process. It's something that helps in facilitating the best out of the construction. So now the important thing is very important, you know, to clarify this issue of beam. Often people think about building information modeling. When you say why is a beam, they ask you why is a beam, and they were referring to okay, they want to see a 3D model. No. 
The information model is the most important. The I here is the main point in the process. It's just like saying business information system. You could see that there is a business information system in the business world. You could, uh, can you uh, recall that one? Information system. So within here is more of an adjective to the information. It's just like the first thing is information modeling in the construction industry. That's information management in construction industry. But to just make the construction industry, then the word building comes in. So the word is more of building information, the information modeling of buildings, rather than thinking like it's a building model. When you take it as a building model, that's when you think that if they call BIM, you always want to see a 3D. No. In, in the Nigerian Army University view now, where some, some of the people will just have an A3, a BIM 360, BIM 360 platform. Right now we are having some people uh, making their own submission on, on, on just um, Microsoft Word. Some are even making their submission on Excel. Some are making their submission on AutoCAD. Some are, you know, but if, if at all we can make a platform where all of us as stakeholders can have a kind of what we want at the right time, adequately, then that's beam, please. We should understand that the concept does not really limit into that building's model. So that's why it's an information model. So it's the information that is provided by all the stakeholders that matters in, in the beam, it's not the building itself. So don't think that you are not able to achieve Look, we, you, if you have a team of uh, engineers, architects, quantity surveyors, all, and they all accept, let's say the architect, engineers, whatever, they are accepted to work, but the quantity surveyor want to work on his, the way he does it before. If provided you can make a 3D, a kind of a platform where the quantity surveyor can also come and keep his information and make it available to other stakeholders, please, you are still using BIM. And the team is for BIM as well. So he, not necessarily that everybody need to do it exactly 3D. No, if they, if for instance, the structural engineer also so think that some of his calculation can only go with other softwares and he can make it available with one, but provided that the 3D model is there to incorporate all those informations in one way or the other, it's okay. Don't force everyone to do the 3D model. If you take it as 3D model, that's when you think BIM is just a building model, but it's not an information model. Uh, that's as against the information model. Then coming down to issue of BIM levels. I will just make a brief introduction of those ones because you will get to know more about them uh, later. When you say BIM models, there are three criteria to know for which BIM processes applies. One, the use level. You have the 2D, 3D, 4D, 5D, 6D, whatever, and today in Liverpool we call it ND because it's a kind of it's a kind of uh, terminology now that okay it should just be ND. 2D visualization of 3D. I mean, when it comes to, uh, the three, uh, 2D dealing with more of uh, basic visualization of the plans and other things, you do 3D. So that's what I'm saying. Now the dimensions here does not mean, if at all you think that beam is just a mere a, uh, X, Y, and Z dimension, then you are wrong. That's why I said you can ask somebody and tell him what is his contribution. For example, you could see that the 4D here, 4D is scheduling, project planning, lean structures, whatever, you know, that is a dimension that cannot be physically available, you know, in the 3D, but it can be just a mere documentation. If you say 5D estimating, 6D sustainability, 7D facilitation, those information may not necessarily come in that physical three-dimensional drawings that you think. That's why it's always wrong to think that you only have beam when you are having that physical structure. Allow for other stakeholders to understand the concept of beam. Don't monopolize the concept of beam to architect. If you are architect and you think that in architecture you only provide things in three-dimensional drawing to mean beam, that is for you. For 4D, 5D, do you have 5D in physical world? No, you only have X, Y, and Z. But 5D, 6D, 7D, those are things that will come as a text. Those are dimensions that will come as a text. So if that they can do it and make it uh, cooperative, that's fine. 
You don't need to force everyone to do that one. So it's very important for us to understand that concept. In another way, the issue of the maturity. It's also another good understanding of, for us to understand the concept of being like level zero, level one, level two. Level zero is cut. So that tells you that the story of being does not really start from only getting the right, uh, the exact maturity level. No, you could do your beam in your own way. The cut is the beginning of that, up to get into 2D, 3D, where there is that uh, uh, model base. There is a level one, which this with the model base, uh, 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 what do you call it? Model base, uh, uh, object based modeling. Level one, level two, which deals with model based collaboration, and level three, which deals with uh, network based integration. So, those are all different levels of BIM. I think you can get to understand more on this one next week. I, uh, you have a full lecture on that one. So, going to level of details. Level of details is a concept that is introduced so as to be coordinating the level of information provided at different stages of, uh, of the work. As a project, uh, as a BIM manager, when, for example, in our own case, where we have, uh, we have been coordinating all the consultants of uh, uh, the design, uh, the consultants of design team, so we make them to bring one uh, level 100. Level 100 is just a mere schematic design. For example, here is just an OD 100, level of development 100, where we just needed a kind of volumetric analysis for us to see. The continuous review could still use that volumetric analysis to do some quantification. The structural engineer can also make some understanding. It's just to make sure that at the different level, so that you don't need to go and put all details and, at LOD uh, uh, level uh, 400 before getting everything known. No, you can make the uh, LOD 100, everyone can bring the information, all the countries of you could just see that, okay, this is the volumetric analysis, can I make a kind of rough estimate? If the estimate is, for example, higher than what is needed, he can inform the client, even from level 100, to make sure all other stakeholders were able to reflect quickly and make some changes at level 100. Before, okay, if there is that which is clear, we can move to LOD, two, uh, LOD 200. The BIM manager is the one that will be controlling the label of that information. It, uh, those are standard. In every LOD 100, LOD 200, and 300, all stakeholders are having some certain standard of information that are required for those ones. Uh, it's for the BIM managers also to control what are the label of information and for what purposes and Again, how do they make that decision before the design goes very much a uh, kind of more detail? That's the concept of level of development. Level of details is also another uh, standard, but these are used in UK rather than that of the USA, which is level of development. For example, here in level 100 GO, that's uh, uh, first one, the office chair is only the description now that in the schematic is an office chair. The only side of description is the one that is filled. If you are doing G2, you can make the office, the width, the 450, the height, but the manufacturer and model information are not included. As you are going further, then more information could be coming. Just to make sure that, okay, from schematic design, somebody can say, okay, is it an office chair or a sofa? If the client is understanding that it's an office chair and he wants a sofa, from the level o, uh, 100 or GO, he can just tell the other stakeholders that we should combat it to so far. You know, so that there is no need to detail the design of the chair before getting back there. So it's just to control the levels of decision making. And there are very good uh, stages for evaluation as well. So the maturity diagram is just similar to the one that we just dealt with. And those are the model-based model, -based model uh, the, uh, the different levels as I said, but these are the stages of modeling. You see, when you are using the CAD software or just 3D, you are just having an object-based modeling. When you are doing it and having some certain information where the, the, uh, the stakeholders are two or three people working together, it's a model-based collaboration. And the, model, the network-based integration is something that uh, in the future trend of BIM is not really so common up to now. 
So mandatory information for all faces. So introducing the close and open beam. It is because of this kind of situation that, okay, beam is a process, it's a business process from which you can select technology that, that best meets your needs. Do your own beam. Don't think there is, there is always only particular way of doing it. The standards of beam are there to coordinate the situation, not to enforce a particular use of technology, not to enforce a particular kind of a, a particular uh, requirement for you. No, beam standards should be set, should set the standard for how can we best achieve the best out of the process, not the technology. So introducing the closed beam issue. Closed beam or normal beam, which is the case as we are doing usually in Nigeria and Africa or emerging countries, it tends to represent a restricted design environment within which participants are required to use a singular software suit or platform. You see someone saying that, okay, I'm using Rebet and Ruby structure, Rebet structure, Rebet robot, or Rebet, I mean, sorry, Autodex Rebet, uh, robot, Autodex uh, uh, structure, Autodex, whatever, you know, for us to achieve it. If you restrict it, it's a disconnect in communication between different parties. Those are things that are being influenced by the vendor organization. You see the Autodex forcing people to think that, okay, BIM is all about using, making everyone to use the Autodex material so that we can all know. This is not, it's not even a BIM when I can do my model and give it to you as a structural engineer. There is still issue of that IFC standard interoperability. Introducing the closed beam and open beam, but going back to open beam, oh, surprisingly in contrast to closed beam, open beam signifies the conception of new mood of communication or digital language through which compliant technologies, all those uh, vendors, maintain transitability with the model and the associated data itself. Open beam leads to uh, things like IFC, you know, and, um, uh, so when it comes to standard, it's open beam variants to look up out for is the best approach where you can be using your graphics of somebody who is using his uh, Autodex, but what IFC can be a kind of good platform that we can all find ourselves. So now getting back to just definition based on that, let me understand what we understand about B manager. B manager now is someone that receives and manages multiple subcontractor models, coordinate all beam logistics, create, maintain, and analyze federated model and so on, right meeting minutes and other things. So this year, you could see that what I, the reason why I put things here is that once you say BIM manager, you are just saying BIM based project manager, simply. So BIM manager, is it a great job opportunity? Yes, it is now. But in a few years, this job will not exist anymore. We have to understand that one. I want us to understand this issue of what we think. People were taking it much more than it is, and at times less than it is as well. So beam management or beam itself is a work. It is a good work, opportunity for now. Why? Do you know currently jobs called email manager or internet manager? No, of course no. Why? Because it, at the beginning, there was a, someone called email manager, internet manager. But because this is something that we are made not to replace particular profession, but to just make sure they are helping the existing situation. Today, there is no one called internet manager or email manager. So, and this is the Autodex integrated project delivery is something that you could understand a very well concept of BIM and self-explanatory, I just recommended that one. So with this, I have 40 minutes. Normally I have to stop it now. So uh, I will hand over the uh, mic to Moses and then uh, I can say thank you. Thank you very much, Doc. I hope we all enjoyed these sessions and we have a lot of questions to ask. While your presentation was going on, a lot of people sent in their messages via the chat box, and some of them have been answered. One I could remember is um, someone asked if the, if the 3D model was the basic information required for a beam process. 
and I guess a lot of uh, responses have answered this request. So, but now we would want to accommodate some few questions. I can see Famu Yuasu coming raising his hand. Can you unmute your mic and then ask your question, please? Yeah. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Is it part of me? Yeah. Yeah. During the presentation, sir. Yeah. Yeah. It talk, um, actually, since BIM is majorly about information. Yes. And he said, my, based on the, um, on, the uh, um, on some experience I have, I know in construction industry, we have different profession. Yes. So my, my question goes thus. Are all the calculations or drawings as the profession applies? You know, um, according to quantity of your, they made some calculations as architects. We made some drawings. Now, all these informations are they made by BIM or by the professional themselves, and then they are incorporated into BIM software to be made available anytime for any profession for anybody in the construction industry. Okay, if I understand your question well, I think what he seems to be asking is, does we automate the process or professionals are still required to conduct their traditional process? And then incorporate those things inside the BIM software. Yeah, the, that is, the, the to answer your question, you know, that's why I say it is an information management uh, platform. Usually, at any junction, there are certain information that, as a professional, you needed it for your own internal consumption, not really for other stakeholders to have access to it. For example, while as an architect you are making your drawings, you do drafting. You do a lot of uh, kind of uh, you had a kind of uh, what do you call it? The stage sketch type. I mean, a stage of sketching. You know, on that sketching, you do a lot of funny things, a lot of awkward kind of trials. But you don't need to give that information to anyone. So this applies to every stakeholder. As a country surveyor, you do so many calculations internally. What BIM does is just to improve the communication and collaboration. So when the, a certain information is needed from you and you want to make it available to the stakeholders, is then you are just providing it at that platform. So BIM, as a way, in a way, is not a platform to create any information. Information. It's a platform to coordinate all the information. That's why the word modeling applies. So now, if you are having, <clears throat> say, the, con the structural engineer making all his calculations, there are certain information that are needed after his calculation for the other construction or the other stakeholders to know. And it's only the information he's providing to you. Being on its own does not create information at all does not create information. It coordinates information, it models the information from all the stakeholders. So BIM does not do those calculations for you. You do the calculations, you do whatever software you do, and then you provide it on the BIM platform. Does that answer your question, Kwayami? Um, Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you for that. I during the question I noted that um, Adia Adibola raised his hand. So could you please unmute your mic and then ask your question? All right, thank you. Can you help me? Yeah, Abo. Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah. Doctor Said, thank yes. you very much for the wonderful presentation. I really enjoyed it, and I must commend um, the entire Beam Africa. Uh, volunteers. You guys are doing a great job. Uh, my fear or question, let me put it this way, is that uh, this process, are they cloud, is it cloud-based or is it something that can, can be operated in online? Because, you know, most of those, hello? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, because the, what I see now of this is a lot of software that we use now has to do with um, subscription on yearly basis. So if all applications, all tools are on the beam, uh, is it gonna be a cloud-based or you can also operate it offline? <clears throat> yeah, uh, that's why there is that kind of different stages of beam and which are usually based on capability of that particular either team, country or, the, or that particular project. 
you know, there are different. For example, that's why there is object-based modeling. There is object-based modeling is what I and you do usually do on our own, you know, just to help coordinate those information from ourselves. Like we don't do the object-based modeling. We do not integrate any information for that. Then the second stage is model-based collaboration. So if I, you, and Moses can be using a particular model to collaborate, then BIM becomes model-based collaboration at that stage. You get it? So it's just based on capability, and that capability is subject to the complexity of the project, the advancement of the knowledge of, about BIM, the interests, and kind of uh, sometimes even the country. And then the third stage, which you are talking about, which is network-based integration, which deals with yes. cloud. For example, a roof construction, I was opportunity to work for some certain months in a roof construction in London. So there they do, it's very normal for them to do network-based collaboration. Why? Because the head office London, you see them, they're having a project in Dubai, having another project in Los Angeles and other things. So for them, network-based integration is crucial, is vital, and is something that could save them come. So there is, that's why I said you should have your own beam. You don't need to do it cloud before everyone No, You think as a construction management or project management team, you could have a very a, a, a local network for you to call it fine. If you do it, uh, for example, now in Nigerian Army University, what should I call ours? Should I be calling it cloud? Yes, I call it cloud because we use BIM 360. BIM 360, we do the subscription, honestly. We do the subscription and then all of us can just be putting it on that platform. We have iPads given to all contractors. Whenever you go to a particular project, we have about 36 different projects in the new university taking place. Whenever you go to the construction, uh, you see a, a TV, a 55 inches uh, TV, and you always see it stating to the contractor what he's expected to have this month and what he's expected to have next month. So if he is, uh, he is below the uh, that is, if he's having variation of uh, something, uh, particular progress, he can see it clearly. And if there is need for the information, his iPad, on that his iPad, it has the BIM 360. Once he opens the 360, he will see all the informations needed by, uh, given by all the stakeholders at the level of details needed, which is LOD 400 or 500, depending on the level. Because at that construction manager needed all those information. So at that stage also, uh, if the, uh, uh, the contractor has any problem, he just type it that there is a problem with this one. He needed more clarification. And immediately it will prompt the architect at his own position to answer that one. And the client can also see those things. So that is just something simply done by just simple living traces. You get it? So we didn't even go any further, but BIM360 could even do this solution. So, right, thank you. Thank okay. you very much, Doc. I noted that Chris Femzi raised his hand too. Do you still have your question? Kindly unmute your mic and ask your question. No, I don't have a question again. Okay, thank you. So I noticed Skywalker. Yes, could you please ask your question? Hello. Thank you very much. My question has been had and it has been answered. So can we have Marwa ask the question, please? Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Okay, uh, so talking about uh, data sharing and management, uh, yeah. as we've talked before about the legislations and the national strategies and so on, uh, doesn't the BIM um, cause any kind of uh, data um, uh, breach in the security? Like uh, there needs to be some safety measures when, when dealing with the data and so on when we're talking about a national level. So uh, how does BIM uh, address this point? Okay, well, you see, uh, that's why in the concept, that, that, those are what exactly standard of uh, uh, BIM standards sets. Because those issue of data sharing, uh, for example, if I understand you, uh, I'm just going to give you some reference to the project we do. 
One, the architect should never give an editable model to any other stakeholders. He should be able, the architect should only give the model at the IFC level. You get it, which is interoperable for all the social uh, other stakeholders for them to understand. But you cannot edit the data of the architect. And you can also, someone can also not edit the data of any of the professions. So the standard of uh, data sharing, uh, the BIM standard, there is what we call BIM execution plan. In BIM execution plan, all those standards are all clearly stated. That certain information need not to be passed through the other, so one should not also. So I think uh, uh, issue of data sharing are well clearly defined in the policy document, which is the BIM execution plan. And at the national level so far, uh, uh, most of the, I don't think of any African country, if not South Africa, having any set standard for BIM. So uh, for now, like in Nigeria, we are working on the BIM uh, project manager, as a project manager consultant, then you come as a BIM manager. I don't know, Marwa, whether that answers your question. That, yes, that's my that, question, thank you. Yes, and to add to that, um, a level of BIM called 8D, caters for safety and security issues in the BIM process. And it's receiving a lot of attention now. So hopefully we'll have a lot of more work on that. Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, but, but, but to, to clarify that issue of 8D security, you see there is, a, that's why they even call it MD. You see uh, security here, at times it comes as a dimension of uh, data security, like Moses has just said, and it could be, uh, that's information about data security. It could be information about the security situation of a particular building, just like sustainability is 70, when you talk about, uh, uh, yeah, sustainability 70, all those DD or dimensions adding as a particular level of information needed. In fact, even going to other Ds, other ND, as a as a uh, as a policy, like getting to smart city, where you even talk about the the governments, you know, the schools close to that building, or the basic amenities close to that building, all incorporating all those information as different layers of dimension. So, but importantly, as uh, Moses said, uh, data security is also something that is being catered for, uh, for in the. Uh, but if, if all these dimensions are more to do with the building and the relevance of the, uh, uh, and the uh, I mean, more to do with the function of the building than the design team. Thank you, Doc. We, I can notice Suleiman raising his hand. Could you omit your mic and ask your question? Yes, I will, sir. Yes, and my question goes that uh, this that we use for BI, is it the most that must be from uh, the same company or different company, like Prota now. I don't think maybe Prota is on BIM. And if it is, all the BIM software I know, they are from Autodesk. Is it that it's only Autodesk company that is doing BIM or other companies are doing it, sir? All right. Uh, this, I think I have answered the question in the presentation. This is not about the idea of closed BIM and open BIM. Uh, uh, it's not. It's not, but this is what all these vendor software organizations are pushing for. And it is not, we shouldn't accept, we shouldn't accept, and we should always allow. You can come with any other software that is compliant to BIM. And if you are using it, it's fine. So if you know how to use graphics of very well, you should be doing it, and you are welcome, and you are using BIM. And if somebody is using it, it's also fine. But the important thing is that once we are collaborating in the first place, we are not even sharing the data, our raw data. We are sharing only the IFC file. That's a kind of a data that is interoperable for all of us. Not really. So it's not only one software. And then as a form of addition, we have other brands that are pushing the BIM process. Graphisoft, Autodex, we have Nemstashek, and a lot of others. If you go online and search for BIM software providers, you get a long list of names. Yes. Yes, thank you. I hope your question has been answered. Okay, so can we have Michael? 
And then after Michael, we have one more person, and that will be the last question before the end of the session. Mike? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, yeah please. I want to know. Um, I did a research about BIM. Um, that was last Friday, and they were talking about something called 7 D. Please, can I get a, a little breakdown from there? 7 D? Yes, please. Okay, uh, I think uh, we, we spoke about it initially. Uh, all this dimension, uh, 7D dimension, 2D dimensions, uh, I, I, apart from the first 3D, which is the normal existing XYZ, any other D here is a layer of certain type of information. Like 4D meaning scheduling, you know, see, where you have the project and other things. If you go to 5D, it means estimating, but please, those are not really standard. You see it interchanging. So you see someone saying 6D is security, and somebody could say it's facility management. So okay. apart from the 3D is something that we could agree as a, as, a, as a team, and then we can just add the layer of 3D. For example, you are doing a stadium or something like that. You see yeah. crowd simulation, crowd simulation. Yeah a particular level of information you need. That's the emergency, emergency, what you can call it, emergency situation management, you know? So this particular yeah. issue, a very important thing is if you are designing stadium. So in that one, 5D or 6D could even be, could even be kind of a, a, a cloud management, I mean cloud simulation should be the 7D. So all these dimensions are just different layers of 3D. Your 7D you read might be the one here, which is uh, a facility management application like life cycle beam, beam as built or whatever. It could be facility management application. It could be sustainability. It could be security. It could be cloud simulation. So whatever, it could be even win analysis. So whatever level of detail you need, it, could, it is called a dimension. That's why you should have your own beam. Don't keep about somebody's <laughs> okay yeah. okay thank you sir thank you very much so can we have the last question from Znebla Dean I can't hear that. yes he raised he raised his hand can we have his question I usually I didn't see him raising his hands. I just saw... Okay, so can we have Agbo Sunday ask his question now? Agbo Sunday is also not there. Good evening, I'm here. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes, we can. Okay, um, in the course of my research on BIM, yeah. I also come across this uh, BIM and GIS integration, which uh, Autodesk also design a lot of uh, software in this integration process. Yeah. So I just want you to throw more light on the uh, BIM and GIS uh, integration. Yeah, yeah, in the first place, GIS is a kind of info, it's just like a beam at a different level of a detail, a different context. So they call it information system. That's what I'm saying. The whole idea now is all yeah. is, um, is geographical information system. First is information system. What we are having here is information modeling. So it's all about the information management. But of course, in geographical information system, the level of detail at the, at the, at, at, at the minimum is just to know a building position. And this, it's is 21 where, hours. this is where BIM starts. That's from the building, detailing down on to the merest, to the, to the, to the minimum uh, element as well. So uh, what they mean is that it's the integration. Already you see a lot of cities already having their own GIS. That's if you are talking about city GIS. Uh, of all the buildings are there. So, okay, when you already have your own building information modeling detail from the one end, why not try to integrate it? What do integration mean here? Does not mean there is a particular software integrating or you are trying to make a very big file of a city 
where if you click on every building, you can see every detail in it. No, they are just talking about a particular system platform, a database where as much as all the GIS informations that are there, you should be able to also to do all the informations, uh, all the beam information of that city should also be in that particular platform. So it's all about database management where all those information should be there. Uh, Beam-based GIS will be likely to be a kind of a, a smart city approach. So they are independent and they just, uh, the integrating them means integrating more of that information. But they are different. GIS cannot be BIM, BIM cannot be GIS. You can only integrate them using a database. So okay. thank you very thank much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you, doctor, for joining us today. We appreciate you despite your very busy schedule. And this is to all the participants to ensure that they go through the uh, presentation again. They go through the presentation again and see how they can uh, review the, the discussions that have been ongoing and to learn more from it. It's going to be uploaded on YouTube and it's going to be shared to you all via your email. Mm. It's going to be shared to you via your email. So please kindly connect through it and yeah, go to the video. Uh, and sorry, um, Moses, I think there is need to clarify what is the stand of the questions that we see? Have you answered most of those questions? Or we yes, to... all questions have been answered, both in the chat and via the audio. Okay. Okay. And if there is any new information, you, uh, I can take my time to do that. Yes, any new questions will be forwarded to your email as they come in. All right. Through the chat okay. box through uh, the Facebook group and via email. You can connect to us via info at bmartifica.org. We'll be right. available to answer any question and we'll send them to you. Right. Thank you very much for joining. So once again, if you have not joined the Facebook group, please make sure you do so. And if you do not receive uh, email correspondence from us, make sure you notify us in the Facebook group. Later in the next week, uh, Saturday, we'll be having another session from another facilitator. Make sure you don't miss that too. And make sure that you are learning and taking notes. I expect that people will be jotting notes as the session is going on. Thank you all for coming. Do we have any other reaction before we close? And yes, I want to also uh, uh, acknowledge the presence of some of the other program managers. We have uh, them online. Can you all please say hello? Hello everyone, it's Lord Kajuma. Glad to have you here. Thank you very much. Glad to have you too. Yes, that's Thank me. you, Dr. Um, Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Researcher. Is Daniel online? Yeah, hello everyone. This is Daniel Dede. Nice to have you here. You're welcome. Do we Thank have everyone. Richard? Hello? Hello everyone. Yes, that's Richard. Hi. This is Richard. From Ghana, Richard. Okay. Do we have a fees on? Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Afizu Edigon. It's good to have you guys here. Nice lecture, though. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining the session. We'll be sending the, the links for the uh, the presentation and the video to you all. Make sure you go through them. And during the week, we'll be having discussions on the Facebook group to have a summary and a recap of the session. Make sure you participate in that. Interestingly, we have some people from Autodex that will be coming in to have a session with us. As we clarify the information with that, we'll pass it on to you. Thank you, and do have a nice day. So can we all wave in the chat box while we end it? Real problems are still there. One job was still driven. It is.